Hey there, Pastor Eric here from Connection Church in Columbia, Tennessee. The message that you're about to hear, we truly believe is gonna be a blessing to you. So our request of you is if it does bless you that you'll take and you'll share it with others. We want like everything for people to be connected with Jesus. Our desire is for you to be connected with Jesus. Our prayer is that you would be connected with Jesus. But if you share this message with others, they'll be connected with Jesus too. God bless you. Would y'all be offended if I used my electronic Bible today? Yes. Lord, forgive him. And, no. Appreciate your honesty, Glenn. All right, so I want to use it. The reason I want to use my electronic Bible today is because this is actually, God wakes me up at weird times, like one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. And it's really hard to read my analog version of the Bible that early in the morning because you have to have bright light. And I'm at the age where I need the extra light. Can I get an amen? Yeah. yeah. And so I, I use my electronic Bible and I highlight it with verses that are super special that I feel like God's really speaking to me through. And so I want to I want to use this particular passage today, um, and I have it already highlighted, which helps me, I think, with the flow of what's about to happen. I've been spending time, uh, obviously, praying, asking God to give me direction on where we're going as a church. I've been asking Him to, um, to speak into the leadership, that we would all be in unity on that. And this last week or so, I've really just kind of been hearing one word in my mind and in my heart. And I started to push into that and just kind of say, you know, all right, just ask the Lord, is that something that you're trying to, to use to help guide or is that just me? You know what I mean? <clears throat> and the word is pain. The word pain. And then I just really started to think about and process what's been going on in my life, what's been going on in many of your lives, because I do have the honor to interact with a lot of you. Um, and this week, as I was praying through that, I'd actually come to the staff, I'd come to the elders, um, I'd come to, this is crazy. So as I'm praying about this, on Tuesday, we had staff meeting, I'm mentioning this on Wednesday, we had our ministry leadership team meeting, I'm mentioning this on Thursday, the elders meeting, once again mentioning this, and everybody's in unison on it. And then uh, I received a text from Brian, who had received a text from Candace. This is, just go with me, okay? Can y'all follow me on this? And who had screenshot a post, because I'm not on social media, had screenshot a post from Charity Kimes, and sent it to me, or maybe you just told her about it, and he screenshot and sent it to me. It doesn't matter. Go with me on this, okay? And, you know, Charity had no idea what we had been talking about. And here's what it says. Pain. First word. Got my attention. Because we haven't been talking. Pain. So many people I know are hurting and are desperate. That's another word that a lot of people have been talking about right now. Not just desperate, God, but would you make me desperate for you? Like, would you put a desperation in me, meaning a hunger and a thirst for more of you? Desperate for a touch from Jesus. Anybody? Can, you, can anybody relate to that? I have people that I love that are walking through the following right now. I can't explain this any better. I want to read this because it goes completely in, al in alignment with what God has been placing in my heart. And it says, I have people that I love that are walking through the following right now. Death of a child for the second time around. A brain aneurysm leading to a stroke and single side paralysis. Serious debilitating depression. Children in rebellion against God. Hospice with life ending in a few hours or days. Since then, she's passed. Leaving behind a family that needs them. Substance abuse. 
Single parents trying to make ends meet, divorce. Listen, I'm not giving you this message to drag you down. This is the reality that we're living in. And we can stay in this reality or we can be set free. We can stay right here or we can receive from the Lord exactly what He wants. And that's to give us joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's to set us free from the pain. Not that you won't have pain, but that He's just going to go, I mean, in life we're going to have pain. Can I get at least one amen? Amen. You're like, well, I don't want amen because that means pain's coming. Well, welcome to life. Can I explain to you what pain does? Pain is an alert that something's out of alignment. This creation is out of alignment. Well, I mean, when you see where sin came into creation, automatically God says, women, I love you, but pain in childbirth. Man, I love you, but pain in your labors. Do you see it? Because things are out of its alignment in conjunction with what God created it to be. That's why when the new creation comes, there will be no more pain. Woo! No more suffering. Why? Because everything goes back into alignment. We're getting a replacement hip. See? You knew exactly what I was talking about. Substance abuse, single parents trying to make ends meet, divorce. This is Charity's message going on. I could go on and on. I went to the prayer room today, which by the way, Jimmy, thank you for listening to the Lord on that and starting that. And that's what's crazy is like, you're going to see she's praying. She's using that, that prayer to attack the pain. She said, I went to a prayer room today so heavy, so broken for my friends, and I wept before the Lord. He showed me His angels taking care of each of these situations. He allowed me to feel His presence and His love. Such a weight of burden fell off of me, and I felt Him take it. This is what He does for us. He takes our burdens. He takes care of our friends. He dispatches angels to bring comfort to them. When you are in despair, turn to Him. Psalm 147, 3, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Keep praying because he's always listening. Love y'all. This is, this is what we have to grab a hold of. You have pain. Yes. But I know a great physician. You have pain. Is God alerting me that something's out of alignment? Did I cause that? Or is this just part of creation in its fall? Are those not great questions to ask? Many of y'all don't know this, but I want to share this testimony. About a week and a half ago, I had to get a cortisone shot in my hip because I'm getting old. I know, I look 12, I get it, but (laughs) this year I'll turn 49 years of age. Getting so close to the big 5-0, bring it on. And my body says, stop sometimes. But about four months ago, it's actually two years ago, I started having hip pain. Uh, But about four months ago, it was just... The early in December, I started getting a pain that I never had before that was a consistent, nonstop throbbing in my hip, and it wasn't going away. And I, I started to get to the point where I couldn't stay on my feet long, and I was hobbling, and I mean, it was just, it was at this place, and I was really struggling with it because we were about to go to Albania with my daughter to drop her off for the first time. We were coming into Christmas season prior to that, and I couldn't really do Christmas shopping the way I wanted to. I couldn't be with my family the way I wanted to because if I was on my feet too long, it was just this excruciating pain. When I went in to get my cortisone shot on that, um, that Thursday, week and a half ago, 
I was at a level, like one, out of one out of ten, I was at a five constant. Just at a constant five in pain. Waking up at night, couldn't sleep, just all this stuff. And, you know, I'm not saying this for you to feel sorry for me. I'm saying this so that you understand an illustration here. Um, I was going through all this pain, and they diagnosed me with hip dysplasia, so apparently I'm a dog. Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's a joke. Go with me on this. We can laugh every once in a while. But I have hips that do this instead of this. It's been like this all my life, but now it's come to the point where I've used them too long and we're having issues, right? And so they started to use this term, hip replacement. I'm like, can we do something else? Like, can we just start somewhere else? Well, you know, the hips that they have now, they're amazing. They're, you know, superb. They're like, I don't care. I don't care. Can we do something else? <clears throat> well, what we can do is we can give you a cortisone shot, but it only lasts for a little while. I'm like, bring it on. Anybody else with me on this? Yeah. Hip replacement, a shot in the hip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, this. So I got the shot, and it didn't really feel relief right away. The next morning, I woke up with no pain. The relief brought an awareness to what I was living in. And then it made me really think about like in that pain the things that I was missing. Going to the store with my kids and not having to sit on the first couch I could find. I wasn't couch shopping. I needed the couch. Or I'll sit in the car and wait for you. How many times did I say that, baby? And then I went with, uh, I mean, Buddy and Carrie went with me to Albania, and I'm like, in the hills. And, with, and I know, because when we go to, I don't know if y'all know this, but in other countries, they walk everywhere. Crazy. Like, I don't even. Do you have cars? Because I can use one right now, right? They walk everywhere, and I knew where we were going to be going on this trip. And to add insult to injury, I, could, I was struggling to walk, and then I got the flu. <laughs> I'm like, really? Come on. But then I start to realize that God uses pain also to get our attention. He's like, I, I want to grab your attention. I want to. Y'all realize that pain is an alert for you? I watched, uh, we were, Beth and I were blessed to go to watch UNA, the volleyball team. They do a sand volleyball and it was freezing cold. I'm like, I feel sorry for y'all. So, we went to the sand volleyball because one of our church members, Thais, is the coach for UNA's sand volleyball. So we wanted to support her. So we went down for the games, and one of the girls did a dive in the sand and dislocated her shoulder. Just, I mean, she was crying, she was hurting, and they had to go in, they had to reset it. And Beth came out of that, she said, um, some of the things that I learned in that about pain, because she's watched the the Yancey's little boys processing what was going on. And by the way, they process, process out loud. <laughs> and it's like questions like, why, why is there, what is the, what is the, we're like, stop. <laughs> and they're processing that, but you're going, all right, as they're processing that, you go, aren't we like that as kids? Like we're processing, but why the pain and why the, and it's like the pain said something's out of alignment. Get this, get out of that game. And then when the shoulder was put back, the pain was still there to say, you don't need to do that still. Right? Because I know the drive of these athletes, they're going to be like, put me in coach. No, 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 no. You're still hurt. Like there's a number of things that go on with this whole thing of pain. So God can use this to speak to us. And it just kind of reminds me of... I was, man, I was asked, I told Beth, pray for me. I don't know what passage to use because there's so many. We live in a creation that has pain in it. But God can use that 
But can I tell you, he can also relieve that. Oh, y'all don't believe it? Because I ain't getting no amens right now. Do you know that he can relieve your pain? He can actually turn that pain into joy. I mean, think about this. Jesus, for the suffering, counted it all joy. Anybody? What suffering? The pain, excruciating pain beyond anything that I've ever endured. By the way, when I talk about pain, I'm not just talking about physical. I'm talking about emotional, mental. Jesus had spiritual pain. How do I know that? Because he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? By the way, we haven't, we've never endured that. Ever. Because he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He took on us the wrath that we deserved. Or I'm sorry, took on himself the wrath that he deserved to free us from that wrath. And I'm looking in this passage in Matthew chapter 9. By the way, there's two other gospels that talk about this. And it says, while verse... uh, See, see what I'm doing here? Um, 18. You can expand that too and make the words larger. That's why I like digital Bibles. While he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came. And we'll find it in another gospel. His name is Jarius. He actually tells the name of the ruler. And he knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. Y'all, Look at me real quick. That verse hit me big time this morning. What have we been called to do when it comes to Jesus? We've been called to follow him, right? Watch this. And Jesus rose and followed him, and then his followers followed him. And the reason that's important is we see right in the midst of us what we're called to do when people are in need. Follow Jesus. Do y'all understand that? Like, we're called to follow Jesus. And as we follow Jesus, he's the one who's actually doing the work in our friends and in our family and our... Make sense? But we follow him. And in this case, somebody comes and says, I need you. I have a need. And so Jesus gets up and goes to them. It's the answer, that answer to a prayer. But then we get into the point where they just bring it straight to Jesus. Like the other one is bringing somebody else to Jesus. This one's, I'm bringing my stuff straight to you. So here's what's happening. If we follow Jesus, he'll take us to the people who have the needs. But at the same time, as we're going along, people will come to us who have the need. Why? Because they see Jesus in us. Do you understand? We're ambassadors for Christ. We're a representation of Jesus here on this earth. Because that's what an ambassador is. Someone who represents the country you're from. And so as a representative, we are a part of the ministry of reconciliation. And we can be a part of seeing people find healing and relief from pain. It says, and behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood. By the way, that term discharge, it has three different types of translations. One is an issue of blood, a flow of blood, a discharge of blood. Issue of blood is to issue something. I, I, I like to use that phrase right now, the issue of blood, so that I can ask you, what's your issue? What is it? What's that thing of pain in your life? Come on, let's stop pretending. Let's stop pretending and let's be honest with ourselves and with others. The pain that we have in our life. And it may not just be personal, but maybe you're bringing somebody else to Jesus who you know is in pain. But what is it? It says, And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. In one particular passage, it actually says that she had been suffering from. So if you look at that, it actually says it right there. Suffered from. Our pain is a suffering. Am I wrong? 
It's a suffering. Feel free to do a word study on the word suffering. Because that's an intriguing one right there. But it's a powerful study because you're going to find in that, those passages, you're going to have words like joy and peace and faith. Anybody with me on this? Are you still thinking about something else? Like what you had for breakfast? Anybody? We're leaning into this message, right? And asking the question, what's the pain in my life? Because Jesus wants to touch you. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. Another piece of this puzzle is as we were prepping for messages, I always ask, we sit up here um, as a staff with like four tables and we surround those tables. I'll whiteboard and I'll put the question, what do our people need to hear? Well, this week it shifted from what do our people need to hear to what do we want to see in our people? It's time to go beyond hearing and it's time to apply what we've already heard.